But let's talk about public and private APIs. So let's go to the API Hub. I have an existing API, a uh, tutorial API. I'm just going to go into it in edit mode. All right. So in the API details, uh, you see this uh, section here that says expose to public. And uh, this is uh, true. So this means that this API is currently exposed to the general public. Uh, this API has only one endpoint at this time. Uh, you can add, you know, unlimited amounts of endpoints. So what we're going to do is that we're going to test this API out. Let's take a look at this endpoint. We're going to test the development environment because that's uh, the currently deployed environment. And it's running one function, uh, our demo function. And all this is doing is returning whatever you send it. Uh, so it's returning the request uh, headers, the request body, and if uh, there are request parameters, it's returning that as well. And just to confirm, this uh, is deployed to just the development environment. All right, currently exposed to the public. Let's test it out. We're going to pull in Postman. So this is the same uh, URL as that API. When I ping it, I get my response. I get the request headers, I get the request body, and I get the query parameters, which is, in this case, only one query parameter. Uh, so let's go back to our API, go back to the details, and I'm going to uh, you know, uh, hide it from the public. Save. We're going to deploy back to the development environment. So now I have version 5 deployed to the dev environment. I'm going to go back to that API. I'm going to ping it again. And here it says, not authorized private API. So this is kind of what you want if you have uh, you know, uh, resources and APIs that you do not want to be exposed to the public. Now, you can have APIs exposed to the public with some protection. Uh, security, po security policies like IP whitelist, block list. So there are different ways to have uh, it exposed and still protected, but we're not going to get into that in this video. That will be a future video where we'll go over security policies. Uh, but here, let's do something really quickly. We have something called system users. Uh, system users are basically uh, bots or, you know, that you can grant access to APIs. Right. Uh, so let's uh, grant one of our system users access to our API. In this case, the API is a tutorial API. We're going to edit. So now this uh, user, this system user Jarvis, has access. And let's get the API keys. Remember that there are three environments for APIs. So we're just going to pull in the development environment API keys because this app, this API is only deployed to the development environment at this time. If I was testing the test environment, I would be, I, I would have grabbed the test uh, environment APIs. So I'm going to come over here to my post map. I'm going to add a header x API key, and then I'm going to uh, paste those credentials, and then I'm going to ping this API again. There you see it. Uh, we have access once again. So the API is working. We have access to the API. So this API is still private, right? Uh, what we have done is that we've basically exposed or granted access to a system user. And we've taken that, you know, the API keys of this user. And we've had access to this API. Now, another way of granting access to an API that is not, ex that is not exposed to the public is uh, to subscribe users to that API. We're going to get into this in a different video, or a video relating to uh, subscription services. So you could uh, imagine granting access to people, and everyone you grant access to will have their own API keys. So that way you know who's you know, accessing your resources. All right, uh, we've uh, basically... Uh, gone through the workflow of uh, testing public and private APIs, and I'll catch you in the next video.